In this episode of the Nurse Practitioner Podcast, Alexandra Hallbaker discusses NP mentorship and the power of community within the profession. She is also a medical science liaison. Thanks so much for joining us today, Alex. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. All right. Well, first off, how would you define a mentor? So if you Google the definition of mentor, you're going to find a wide variety of answers, but there's some significant qualities of a mentor. It's somebody that guides, somebody that supports, and somebody that gives direction and encouragement to their designated mentee. Mentors really must have that attitude of when one succeeds, we all succeed, and have that desire and that passion to not only share knowledge, but have that intellectual exchange with another person. Another really important trait of a mentor are those interpersonal skills of listening and communicating. Mentors should not just be invested in the professional growth of their mentee, but also the personal growth and should celebrate those wins and those milestones along the way. Having that investment in the holistic growth is so important because all of us have lives outside of our very important careers, and that should really be recognized along the relationship. Mentorship can look a little bit different depending on the scenario. So many times in the NP profession, there will be an assigned mentor to someone new that's onboarding or an NP that will rotate through a variety of mentors. Mentorship can last anywhere from 12 plus weeks for a new NP grad or maybe just a few meetings to review and get feedback and critique on a journal submission, for example, or it can be an ongoing relationship throughout a career journey. But the bottom line is that it's important to set those expectations from the start. It's also important to remember that even the greatest mentors are not going to have all of the answers, but the important piece is that they'll be committed to helping guide you to those answers. So that might mean acting as a connector by sending an email introduction or facilitating an in-person networking lunch with the mentee and someone with a career path that the mentee desires down the road. At the core, mentorship is understanding that the relationship is collaborative, it's based on a system of trust, and it's setting that strong foundation for the mentee. Thanks for sharing that overview. Next, what are the responsibilities of the mentee in a mentor-mentee relationship? So the mentee actually holds a lot of the responsibility in the relationship. As a mentee, it's really important to have a good attitude with enthusiasm, being very open to feedback, and also to identify professional goals while making them actionable. So what's critical is making sure that your goals are SMART goals, which is the acronym that stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and trackable. Making sure that the relationship works for you and your mentor in terms of knowing how often you're going to meet, understanding if you'll be shadowing this person, throughout their whole work day or maybe part of their work day? Will you be seeing patients together? So again, really setting those realistic expectations so that neither party is confused or disappointed. Self-reflection and honesty within yourself is also important as a mentee. You must really be able to address what your needs are and assess where you could use some improvement. So for example, if you're not comfortable speaking to a patient on the pros and cons of starting a new treatment regimen, it's really the responsibility of you as the mentee to voice this to your mentor. So from there, coaching and advice will come from your experienced NP mentor, and the mentee will have the opportunity to practice time and time again with having this conversation with patients and become more proficient in that specific skill. It's also important to feel empowered to ask for support and ask questions. This can be very scary, but that's normal. And as a mentee, you'll really want to advocate for yourself, which can sometimes be very challenging and cause those feelings of unease. But just understand that it's part of the process. It's pertinent to remember that most mentors are not getting paid extra for their mentorship, and they're doing this on their own free time and their own free will. So mentees should really come prepared come organized with insightful and thoughtful questions and comments and put them into action as reviewed with your mentor. And let's not forget that being a mentee is very beneficial in a lot of ways. As a mentee, you're coming in with a fresh perspective. You're coming in with that new energy and you might be able to identify some improved ways of efficiency or practice flow. So maybe as a mentee, you identified an order set revamp that could be beneficial to optimize charting. And when the timing is right, you can mention this to your mentor. This is a new idea that could emerge into a project for the betterment of patient care down the line. And lastly, really remember to be thankful and appreciative of your mentor. So 
treating them to a morning cup of coffee or a quick thank you handwritten note can really go a long way. You could even take it one step further. If you had an exceptional mentor, you could email or communicate with their manager about how educationally rewarding your experience was and really highlight your mentor's work. We appreciate you sharing those mentee mentor insights. Now, if there's someone listening to this episode who didn't have a formal mentorship during their onboarding when starting out at a new job or maybe felt like they weren't adequately prepared for their role, what can they do? That's a really great question because someone in this position is likely frustrated, overwhelmed, and probably doesn't feel too confident in their role. So I'd recommend having an honest conversation with the leader of your clinic or your section and ask for the names of NPs in the institution, which you can connect with. This could also be a chance to brainstorm ideas and voice concerns in a very safe space. And from there, it'll be time to dig in send those intro emails, or better yet, do an in-person introduction to those new NPs. There's also options of signing up for shorter virtual NP mentorship programs. These last around eight weeks, and you can sign up for them online, and some that are specific for RNs transitioning into the new NP role. And if there's someone wanting to go really above and beyond, there's an opportunity to create a formal mentorship program within your institution or organization where NPs, especially those new NPs, can have a mentor pairing, can be supplied with a specific agenda and timeline for skill building, have a space for questions, be a part of a very goal-oriented process, and have that time for reflection and advice. This could be done by asking for grant funding or possible funding from a vendor to be hired in to assist in this type of program development. This is not something that's going to be done overnight and would really take a lot of time and a lot of effort of several individuals. And of course, getting that administration time for this endeavor would probably be necessary to get it off the ground and to get it running. And it's always an option to ask for protected time on your schedule to put your focus into this project, especially if you're at an academic situation where you would be supported in this sort of endeavor. My philosophy is if you don't ask, the answer will always be no. So taking that first courageous step by asking is vital. This is just a very classic example of noticing a problem or noticing a hurdle and taking action on it that will affect the greater good of patients first and foremost, and then the organization and NPs down the line. And not to mention, this is a huge professional growth opportunity in the leadership and program development realm for yourself. We're sure our early career NPs and NPs starting at a new role will find this information helpful. What are the different options for new NP grads when it comes to mentorship and support? New grads can really look into an NP residency program that usually lasts anywhere from one to two years if they're interested. The formats can look a little bit different, but usually you're paired with an in-person cohort and you'll have clinical responsibilities with direct patient care, but also in a supervised setting. So there's usually a required attendance in a didactic type session that'll include case study discussions and reviews with your peers. And this is truly a fantastic way to sharpen your clinical skills in that real world setting, helping you to boost your confidence and really networking with your peers. Glad to hear there's mentorship options for our newer NPs. Now, how do you handle saying yes to being a mentor when you don't feel ready or still feel new yourself? Many times we're asked as NPs to be a mentor way earlier than anticipated in our career, which can seem very overwhelming and inevitably that imposter syndrome will settle in. And what I'd recommend is take the leap and say yes. We all know way more than we think we know and our experience is so valuable. And I can speak personally from experience on this topic. And when I didn't know an answer my mentee was asking, I would just be honest with my mentee and say those three famous words that everyone fears saying of, I don't know. And I would help them find the answer or we'd find the answer together and troubleshoot it together. Or we'd ask leadership or someone more senior on our team and find that answer together. Another option is to start very small at a micro level. And instead of becoming a formal mentor, you could ask new MPs in your clinic a simple, how are things going? Anything that I can help troubleshoot you with in regards to charting a complex patient, onboarding paperwork, et cetera. Starting a new job, as we all know, comes with a load of questions when you're new, and it can help to build a supportive environment and that camaraderie, which is essentially the spirit and definition of community as a whole. 
it's a very rewarding experience to be a mentor. And I was able to learn from my mentees just as much as they were able to learn from me. This is great motivational advice. Thanks so much for sharing. Finally, how can NPs become more interconnected within their local NP community and beyond? I have a real passion for community, and I believe there's real power within the NP peer community. It's that sense of belonging. It's that bond. It's that connection. So step one, checking to see if your organization, your current organization that you're in or employer offers monthly or quarterly NP meetings for discussion, for updates, and different case reviews. You could also look into professional organizations such as ANCC and AANP, which offers many ways of connecting those NPs into similar specialties. And social media, we live in a world where connection is literally at our fingertips. So managing connections via LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook groups, podcasts, really expanding your network and having these types of conversations has never been so accessible. And attending national conferences or congresses, many times there's specific NP-only audience tracks or networking events specifically for NPs. So it's really worth asking your employer what they'll cover for CME-related expenses, as usually this is commonly a covered cost or something that's fully or partially reimbursable, depending on where you work. And regional society meetings, I think this has a tendency to get lost and not thought of as often. So whether you're in the field of allergy or in the field of GI, there's regional meetings that might include half-day symposiums or networking dinner events. And I'd encourage everyone to dive into the region and see what society meetings are available. And volunteering can be a great way to find community for NPs as well, whether it's taking a medical mission trip, volunteering in the medical tent at a full or a half marathon, or volunteering at a summer camp for children where there's always a need for medical volunteers. And reaching out to a classmate you went to NP school with and see where their path has taken them. You could ask them questions about their likes and their dislikes or a job they've taken. Maybe they're in management now. Really reigniting those relationships could help to expand your NP community and an opportunity to stay supportive of one another. The bottom line is really to stay curious and find the courage to ask those hard questions. And you'll never know if a relationship could lead to a collaboration on a paper, a job opportunity, chances to give a lecture at a conference or grand rounds, or maybe a colleague that turns into a best friend. The possibilities are endless when you take that first step in connection and the rewards are truly limitless. Thanks so much for your time today, Alex. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor. For more great content from the nurse practitioner, be sure to visit us online at tnpj.com for the latest NCPD articles, columns, and much more. Please leave us a five-star review on iTunes and Spotify as it helps with the podcast's visibility and helps us to keep bringing you this great content. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at The Nurse Practitioner Journal and on Twitter at TNPJ underscore journal. Thanks for listening. This podcast does not constitute medical advice and should not be taken as such and does not replace professional judgment or advice. The ideas and viewpoints expressed on this podcast do not reflect the official position of the speakers, authors, affiliated organizations, the Nurse Practitioner Journal, or Walters Kluwer. Please note that the hosts of the Nurse Practitioner Podcast are not clinicians. However, we created the Nurse Practitioner Podcast to bring you relevant clinical information by NPs for NPs. Thanks again for listening.